Hello and welcome back to the Big Think Dimensions Game of the Year 2019. The only game of the year bold enough to go on forever and not get to the game of the year list and come out in January. We're double brave. You know, I think we'll finally get to it this time. <laughs> If you would like to support our bravery, you can go to <laughs> patreon.com slash gbpodcast. Not only will you support the bravest content on the internet, you will get other benefits like commentary tracks to bad movies, the ability to vote on which bad movies we'll have to watch and do bonus shows on, bonus armchair dev pitches, and many more nebulous bonuses that may or may not appear at some point. The theme of this game of the year is patreon.com slash GB podcast. Okay, guys, let's get into it. I want to start with something positive, so I'm skipping half of these. Guys, let's talk about best companion in a yeah. game. <laughs> That's a good one. This is a category I've been looking forward to this whole time. The candidates are Roti from Indivisible, BD1 from Jedi Fallen Order, <laughs> Donald Duck from Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, he's got a cold. He's got a cold. <laughs> he was dying in that game. It was really sad. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking poor Tony. He was. Oh, my God. Nico from Devil May Cry 5. Yeehaw. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe this is on the... <laughs> Your hitbox in Jedi Fallen Order, which follows nearby. <laughs> I hate you because this is in here, but you removed a mine of your dead dad in Astral Chain. <laughs> Who may or may not be in the game. We've beaten yeah. up on Astral Chain enough. I don't know about that, young man. I'm just going to remove the hitbox from this running, <laughs> from the writings here. Oh. Uh, Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. Companions is that true? He never leaves you alone. <laughs> <laughs> Lappy from Astral Chain, which begs a question I'll ask in a moment. Kickstarter backer portraits from Bloodstained. That cool arise Lance myself dude. in my shadow. Yes, arise myself <laughs> in my shadow. Uh, Silva Chariot from <laughs> Bloodstained. <laughs> totally different character, Dan. They're not copyrighted. Okay, if you say so. I'm dumb enough to believe you. And the fairy from Bloodstained. Honestly, guys, we actually had like one or two more bloodstain ones. We had to cut it down to three. Bloodstain gave you a lot of cool partners, and that was that was nice. I appreciated it. Uh, we're gonna open up voting. We're gonna get three votes. Okay, gentlemen. Okay. Okay. Ah. I'm gonna go ahead and let Mister Feel start, and I will just type in a one next to Lappy for him. Yes, I put Lappy on there. I enjoy Lappy and Marie. They're the same <laughs> character, basically. Uh, uh, you Mr. know what? Act now that like we're talking about it, I think now is a really good time to bring up uh, best companion as like in the game, or if they were a companion in real life, they would be the best. <laughs> I, I figured in the game. No, I'm in, in the game. Okay, I wasn't sure which I meeting we were. Moments. I'm gonna count real life. As well. <laughs> I enjoyed Lappy hauling ass through the worst chapter in the game like some sort of cryptid. <laughs> you know, Lappy, Lappy is the positive light in that game. It's it's crazy. Lappy is somehow the only untarnished thing. And she's not from Ava. In the entire... You're right. And she isn't just a direct yeah, parallel of right. anything in Ava. She's almost like it, a complete... Until the people really horny for her. It's almost like she's this, like... This one part of this game that is completely untarnished. Just good. Wholesome, even. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, Mr. Feel, what, what are your other votes? Uh, Mr. X. Okay. Especially if he's face-apped, but Mr. X normally, too. <laughs> no, not face-app Mr. X. Just him opening the door and smiling at you. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kickstarter backer portraits from Bloodstain. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Bob, I'll go ahead and let you vote. Roti would be my number one pick, but they patched out the part that makes him amazing. <laughs> Bob, please don't punish <laughs> them on both sides. <sighs> so I can't. I uh, I want as much as I want to vote for Roti. 
He isn't just a loud dumbass stomping his feet around while you're having a dramatic moment in a cutscene, a thing that we noted was a problem. They patched out almost immediately, and then we were sad. Yes, I want that mode to be activatable. <laughs> I'm, you like, know, oh, my father is dead. <laughs> <laughs> ruined by roadie mode <laughs> yeah i feel like bob Thank if mike z <laughs> i'm pretty sure if we we ask mike z nicely he'll he'll put in a code or something <laughs> that'd be that'd be really funny if just how he doing his Fortnite dance he's like i won't do fast travel but i will do this they're working you on can't stuff. run from fights but i will reinstitute ruined by lappy mode <laughs> well i mean by roti <laughs> somebody's distracted <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for Lappy. I really enjoyed that part of Astral Chain. Yeah. She has many funny jokes. Um the circumstances surrounding her mysterious uh identity is real good. Um uh-huh. and she uh, comes off as a horror movie monster at first. Yes. So, so that's really good. Uh-huh. Yes. Nico is a lot of fun throughout Devil May Cry. I'm gonna give yes. like just because of her van moments. Like every one of those is really good. What's the thing she says to that soldier? Uh, something up, Buttercup. That's uh, crew that's cut. Nero. That yeah, that's Nero. Nero says the crew cut line. Oh, Nero says the crew cut line. She just sits there and talks about how badass Nero is. Yes, while yeah, that that's... dude's just missing an arm or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, man, I wish. And then Roti's dancing next to him. <laughs> 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 Uh, and BD1 soft locks the game. <laughs> Roti's in the background of the garage. <laughs> and my last vote's going to go for BD1. Oh my god. Because BD1 has a, some serious Roti energy and he's made you it to the final game. You can't vote, <laughs> you can't vote for BD1 because he has Roti energy and not vote for Roti. <laughs> well, they're not patching up BD1. No. Look, Roti doesn't electrocute Darth Vader. <laughs> Sorry, but he's right. No, he flossed while Dar died. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. You can't... You can't take that away from me. You know what? I'm voting now. I'm voting for Roti. <laughs> you do it, Dan. <laughs> uh, I'm also voting for Lappy. Not just a fantastic part of an otherwise mostly miserable game. Um, and at... at <laughs> Yeah. Some sevens are stronger than others. Yeah. Some no, sevens are miserable. Yeah. No, being horribly disappointed is miserable. If I went to a really fucking expensive restaurant and they came out with Taco Bell, I would be miserable. Okay, good point. Dan doesn't Dan doesn't want to live in demolition. But man. what if it was the triple double crunch wrap thing? <laughs> That's yeah, that a lot would, of food. That would be oh, yeah, Emeril Lagasse's restaurant. He just pulls out some Taco Bell. Emeril Lagasse's like, bam, there's a double, triple crunch wrap. <laughs> I'm like, Emeril, what the fuck? Would have had less salt. <laughs> you know, some part of that experience would be so surreal that I, I would have to believe it was a dream, and thus it would be amazing. What, yeah. when you met Emeril? <laughs> yeah, yeah and he gave us Taco Bell. And he gave us Taco Bell. Yeah, that part. Um... But yeah, like Lappy's the one part of that game where even compared to other games, like she's delightful and fantastic and a genuine highlight of the game. Um, the ending stuff gets weird with her, like where she is and what she's doing. Oh, they, just, they ship her off to the section where she can't affect anything. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, I hear you. We don't want you to deal with moral, <laughs> moral craze. Bye. Go clean the bathroom. Uh, jeez, this is rough. Yeah, there's some good choices here. Mm-hmm. I do like Lance, dude from Bloodstain. Mm. Portraits, though. I I actually never really used them. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and vote for Nico. I thought she had some really great dialogue all throughout the game. Uh, she has a great uh. A great big sister energy, uh, not a co- not a nice big sister energy. <laughs> no, um, and I really like the relationship between her and uh, Nero. It's it's pretty good. Uh, there's oh, well, I thought you were gonna talk about how she wants to fuck lady. She has a big sister energy of of your parents fucked up, so they're trying extra hard on you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I, I think her interactions with other characters are really funny too and really enjoyable. And she has an energy about her and a tone to her character, her personality that I think brings in a really good contrast. Um, I like her a lot. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna settle with that. Roti, Lappy, and Nico. That's a pretty good list. Wish I could have voted for that Lance dude from Bloodstain though. It was fucking great going around that castle. That dude fucking shit up. <sighs> Casey, I'm gonna I'm gonna need your votes. Who are you targeting? <laughs> You're the only one who hasn't voted, sweetie. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. Uh I'm gonna Should go use shot lock. <laughs> oh shot lock right now on Mr. X. Because look at him, he just he just shows up when you least ex- every single time he shows up. I'm like, that's my companion, all right. He shows up at the worst times possible every single time, and then you then you start the second run of that game, and it's like, oh, he's he's in the first twenty minutes now. That's that sure is great. <laughs> sure is great how he's just here every time now, just stomping his big old feet and. And 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 being being real nice. He one time I opened a door and he just immediately punched me in the mouth. <laughs> Not great. Uh, my other one, my other, my second vote is gonna go to BD One because BD One is <laughs> has a real roadie energy to him. <laughs> has a real energy to him, and and I, I and I like BD One more than roadie <laughs> because I like I like dumb droids. That's a really dumb droid. I think uh, Rhodey would got some points if he actually jumped into little boxes and and, and tore them up. <laughs> and then Andre was like, Rhodey, no! Yeah. Yeah, having environmental interactions with Rhodey would have been delightful. And uh, I, I guess my uh, last vote has to go to Donald Duck <laughs> for his great performance in Kingdom Hearts 3. The one, the voice actor was dying while recording it. So that made him even more endearing. He always let me know where there was food. Uh, he performed a spell stronger than most Final Fantasy summons and killed a man with it. Don't forget about the lucky emblems. Yeah. <laughs> that and then there's just a really good interaction when you start that game. Where Sora's like, I want new clothes. And Donald's like, shut the fuck up. Don't be greedy. And they're like, we have clothes for you. He's like, that's great. And then Donald silently points at himself. And it's like, no. No, they're, they're, we're, you're giving you nothing. <laughs> None for you. He's very good. So, have we decided this properly or did we fuck up again? <laughs> well, we have a winner and we have a three-way tie for second place. <laughs> right? <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> So the winner of Best Companion is Lappy from Astral Chain. The second and third place is tied between BD1, Nico, and Mr. X. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one vote each and hopefully this will fall in a way where we can decide from there. It'll be fine, I'm sure. I'm going to vote for Nico. Bob. Nico. Okay. KZ. Mr. X. Uh, feel. Oh no, BD one. Because I didn't want to vote for Mr. X. How dare Deadlock you? Us. How dare you? You know you want Mr. X. <laughs> I do, but I don't want to deadlock us. <laughs> no, Mr. X. <laughs> That's okay, because now we get to decide who comes in third, and we each get one vote. Nothing could okay. possibly go wrong. Oh, oh God, God. <laughs> Bob. Ah, uh, BD one. <laughs> feel. Mr. X. KZ. (laughs) Oh, no. Call my shot, KZ. I dare you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) BD1. Well, shit, man. I guess BD1 gets three (laughs) votes. Man. Hmm, This is is really strange. Suddenly, Dan's a real big fan of (laughs) BD1. No, I like BD1. He's just no roti. Yeah, he's good. Oh, that's that's terrible. Why would you say such a terrible thing? It's okay. He's a 7 out of 10. Who, Roti? Yeah. Nah. 
Rody would be way higher if he wasn't DLC. Imagine if the Rody speak and, and had like an incredibly deep voice. So, uh, best companion of 2019 goes to Lappy. Second place goes to Nico. And third place goes to VD1. <laughs> Hell of a list! <laughs> These are all definitely the same kind of character in those stories, right? Uh, uh, a lady who dresses up as a dog. A lady who likes lady. And then a robot that acts like a dog. <laughs> it's a hell of a list. And of course, our run runners up were tied uh, four ways between Mr. X, Roti, Donald Duck, and the Kickstarter backer <laughs> portraits from Bloodstain. Good. They can all sit down there together. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. They made it in this category because they're great. Do you, think, do you great. think Donald Duck can defeat Mr. X? Probably not. Yes. I mean, yes, Zeta player is absolutely more powerful than a rocket launcher. Ah, but it might right. kill him. It, he might die too, so he'd be a stalemate. <laughs> he, he, he can just make it one tick lower. It's still stronger than a rocket launcher. He can just go with Terra Flare. <laughs> okay, guys. What are we doing? Uh, we're jumping to worst conference slash event. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our candidates are Bethesda's E3 shock, shock and surprise. I know everyone. Um, they created press conferences. Limited run games. Holy shit! Ora, ora, ora. Oh, oh man. Oh, God. The Vita, game. Vita, 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 Vita. The game awards. And Ubisoft and the Cl Tom Clancy Labyrinth is what someone has written in here, presumably <laughs> talking about the... That is what I wrote. ...nonstop yeah, terror the that was the unending segue between different non-distinct Tom Clancy games. Also, Splinter Cellman is now a mobile game hero. <laughs> oh, Splinter no. Selman. Splinter Cellman. I almost just said his name was Tom Clancy. <laughs> You're in a good headspace. <laughs> uh, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and vote. Limited run games. Worst conference of 2019. Easily. Uh, Bob? You're right, but... Okay. The Bethesda conference is slimy. Like, it has a, a strong presence of just... We're f everything's fine over here. You should feel good about us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to vote for Bethesda. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, KZ? Bethesda. Everything from them... Saying we're we're really sorry we we we're a really good company. You know, here's our kids hanging out. We're all good. Combined with the Fallout seventy six battle royale shit. Mm -hmm. Combined with we created VR. We created <coughs> all of these genres, <coughs> and and now we're creating streaming. And then also the execution of shit like Commander dude, King. Dude, fucking I I get. I get that that's bad, but at Limited Grunt Games Conference, they invented cringing. <laughs> it is a cringe fest. Uh, so, so, sorry, Dan. Didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, I watched the part that you keep mentioning, and it fucking slayed me. And, and there, that is one-eighth of its true horror. <laughs> yeah, but a Bethesda conference has the chance to be good. I don't think a limited run games thing has a chance to be good. You could easily make a good conference for limited run games. You could talk about your initiatives you've been doing with developers and publishers to republish old games. You could announce a couple new ones. You could do some really cool, you know, real life videos with cameras talking to people who are real and getting some, you know... Who are real? <laughs> some ground swelling of support, not... I'm going to shittily green screen myself onto a fake 3D stage while making JoJo's memes while punching with Vita going Vita, 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 Vita. That is so many tears of why would you ever think to do that? Yeah, yeah, no, it's insane. It's like you just need to make something down to earth and approachable for everybody. You didn't. You, you didn't need to try and be funny. You, you, you can't do that. You could have been the only like E3 conference, the only conference happening during E3, the only direct happening during E3 where it's just a dude on his couch. Yeah. There would be no you problem. You could have stunned everyone with your humanity. <laughs> Instead, you became some sort of sort of fucking lizard person. <laughs> you decided to be a shit lord. It's it's nuts. Um I didn't get Feel's vote. Feel, what are you voting for? Bethesda. No, that's fair. I don't blame any of you. I don't. Thank you.
Bethesda's was all that and miserable to watch. Uh, no, Bethesda really wasn't all that because no one threw out JoJo's memes in a desperate attempt to look cool while having a green screening budget that was on the floor. But it was super fucking skeezy and miserable and lacking humanity and gross. It fucking sucks. And, and that, that's, that's why, why that's why the Ghostwire Tokyo segment was just an oasis. It was like this is this is what is this the same conference? Yeah. No, it really stood out. It's like someone used a defibrillator on me when I watched that part. Yeah, it looked promising. Yeah. And even that has been twisted. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. At least at least they showed yeah, Doom. Then Keanu Reeves showed up. Wait, that didn't happen. <laughs> no, that was a different conference, Bob. I'm sorry. Kumi did her weird dance and summoned Keanu Reeves. <laughs> no, that wasn't real. And she left her- and then she left the company. <laughs> and she was at the Game Awards and tried to get Elon Musk to give her a free Tesla. <laughs> Fair. Um, so, that means Bethesda's E3 conference is our worst conference. The worst conference of 2019. Uh, Limited Run Games is our second worst conference of 2019. And the Game Awards slash Ubisoft and the Tom Clancy Labyrinth are tied for third? Yeah, and technically not really voting no, for them. Ubi- do we want to do a tiebreaker for third? Yeah, absolutely. I'm voting for Ubisoft and the Tom Clancy Labyrinth, Bob. So am I. Yeah, I'll vote for that too. Okay, so the Game Awards takes fourth slash doesn't show. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't blame the Game Awards for it's like, oh, you you couldn't get them to say yes to some cool video games, right? Ubisoft, it's you're sitting on Rayman, you're sitting on Prince of Persia, you're sitting on Splinter Cell. There, there, there are oh, cool. Splinter Cell was there. <laughs> you you're not you're not doing anything with the U with the UB art engine anymore. There's so many things that are interesting that you could build as well as Tom Clancy games, but you've decided to not do that. The only bright spot was probably that Watch Dogs thing. I thought that was funny. Old lady shot dude. <laughs> ah, that's true. Yeah, Watch Dogs looked fine. I was interested. Yeah. Um Okay, so we're going to we're going to stick with the bad before we move back to the good. Oh, good. Worst company of 2019, and we're talking specifically within the realm of games. Yeah. Yeah. First candidate, Google. <laughs> Nether Realms, the next candidate. EA. Uh, somebody has written in Bethesda and their children. <laughs> what? <laughs> they kept putting them at the forefront. Oh, okay. Not Epic. just the women, but the children, too. <laughs> I conference them all. <laughs> uh, epic. Blizzard. Oh, God. And the Pokemon Company. We're going to get two votes. That seems fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. This is not an easy category. I can tell you guys that right now. Um, hmm. I'm going to go first, though. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Blizzard, um, and I think we all know why. It's because they stopped taking pre-orders for that May statue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and well, they're deleting her from the game. <laughs> the moment they do that, they will win that category every year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's. God, see. I'm just like. Anyone who listens to this podcast and has no idea I'm kidding is like, wow, what a monster. <laughs> <sighs> Second vote. Second vote. Oh my god, fuck all of these motherfuckers. Yeah, no, they're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Google, Stadia, all that bad stuff. Nether Realm, uh, Crunch, uh, PTSD from all the fatality studying. Mm-hmm. EA, EA, mm-hmm. Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda, yeah, Epic, their store, and all of the and crunch. awful shit, Crunch, uh, Fortnite, hiding Star Wars things, <laughs> uh, uh, Pokemon Company, uh, Ma- Masuda's evil plans. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, my largest complaint can be Google, I feel. I feel like Google lying about negative latency to trick people into buying this shit ahead of the new consoles, them sitting there touting up how powerful their system is uh, without any of that showing at all, in the least. 
is deceptive and shitty. Um, I feel like Google sitting here, uh, just all the different things with Stadia have have been really gross. Uh, like for example, they they touted as 4K 60 gaming. None of the games run at 4K 60. In fact, when you select 4K 60, it fucking streams out like a 1080p thing and upscales it. It's it's, it's like the Xbox One S is 4K and fucking Bob stop. <laughs> Uh, and like it's to the point where it works on my internet but I've been to places where it just doesn't function at all the thing's not a practical product and them sitting there downplaying the issues of it to sell more is really upsetting and not good for the game industry it's not really helping anyone to do a bespoke Linux, Linux port of their game to a platform that barely has any sales that has no prospects so yeah uh blizzard and google uh we're gonna go ahead and go to bob next bob sure uh blizzard and google holy shit that yeah, was quick yeah no <laughs> the, the, those are the two that really stand out of my mind this is the year blizzard decided that they should be in terrible company that i don't want to support oh right yeah they did that whole thing yeah it's insane. Yeah, when they stopped taking pre-orders on that May statue, God, yeah, it was terrible. fucking the worst. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then <laughs> Google doing their nuclear strike that is the Stadia and trying to <laughs> grandstanding <laughs> over it. It's great. Biological weapon that is that Chromecast. <laughs> yes. Uh Yeah. No. Both of both of them are just awful angles for the game industry to go in. Like one just kowtowing to everything China wants, mm-hmm. and the other trying to do cloud-based gaming despite everything that's wrong with it and people believing that the future yeah that that they led people to believe that that's the future because it's the only future that involves them yeah and it will probably close down numerous game studios and it's really upsetting uh yeah it might i mean it's already they've absorbed something right they already took some company and it's basically dead now um yeah they bought someone i can't remember who it's okay, Jade Raymond's there. I, I don't think they were necessarily high profile. I don't know. No, that they, they weren't that, but that doesn't mean they're. Uh, but it's still right. unfortunate, right? It's still right. them grinding something doesn't to dust. They, yeah, it's like yeah, when it we doesn't mean they deserve to absorb them, right? And it's kind of like when we lost Double Helix to the Amazon mimes, mines. Mines, yeah. yeah, that could have been a really good developer. Like they turned out two good games at the beginning of this gen, and then poof gone into the amazon mines they put out they put out a fantastic reboot of killer instinct it's like i can't wait to see what their second season passes and no they they got ripped away and then they put out a fucking fantastic reboot of strider and it was like wow this is maybe the only good strider game oh they're gone uh feel uh let me hear your votes blizzard for sure okay because the may statue yeah yeah uh I don't know. They didn't cancel any diva statues. I I can't I can't vote for. <laughs> Bob's it's like hard. not in second thought. <laughs> what Nether Realm did was really fucking shitty and awful. Like it it goes beyond the level of like normal corporate disregard for people's personal lives to being like you actually scarred people. But what Google wants want Google's goal with Stadia is bad for probably everyone in the entire world world domination so i'm gonna go with google okay i would like to point out again that uh google is a company who owns online video and uh (laughs) online ad revenue uh via adsense and it looks like one of these two things is going to shit its pants and that will actually affect the other of these two things it's not surprising they're trying to find uh, other industries to burrow into. Let them die. Kill it if you must. Uh, KZ, I'm going to need your votes. <laughs> it, dude, dude, we will just, we will run with it if that's how you feel. <laughs> I won't question Ladies it for a second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Mm hmm. Ahem. Blizzard and Google. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fucking tied! They're both the worst company! Google, I'm... because they are offering a, a service and a platform to fix a problem that does not exist. 
them advertising that they have the strongest the strongest platform in terms of power but they can't get their partners and the games to uh, optimize themselves to make use of that power and instead of delaying their thing or saying it's early access or doing anything they blame the developers because it's their fault they should have tried for us yeah and worst of all they put they made square make more content for final fantasy 15 <laughs> that is unfucking forgivable <laughs> how dare they <laughs> how fucking dare they and blizzard most of all they still haven't put Hearthstone on console. What are you doing? You're just leaving money on the table. Come on, well, guys. I can tell you what they aren't doing. Taking pre-orders for that May stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. How terrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Speaking seriously for a moment, the Blizzard thing is absolutely disgusting. Uh, I don't Free feel Hong like... Kong. I don't feel like activity like that should be fucking tolerated. Um, and I think it's disgusting that this is the business norm now. And they, they did that fake it's apology. Okay, they apologized. The, yeah. the, the, it wasn't even apologizing. No, they didn't. Yeah, they just <laughs> acted like we got to the segment of the sh show where it was their apology. They didn't apologize. They just vaguely said that things happened. We're and listening. We, you know, we did some things and it was against uh, what we are. We're listening to you. All right, we have a nine and a half minute long Diablo 4 trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I think this, this category is perfect. Yeah, no. <laughs> we aren't getting better than that. Google It'll and Blizzard. Never, this will never happen again. Yeah, no. Yeah. Google and Blizzard committed a total knockout of every Oh, I just meant like two things that get fours. Yeah, no, that's ri That's ridiculous. Like, fucking Bethesda should have... <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, no, no battle for third. It's it's done. Yeah, yeah it's done. It's fucking they, nuts. They avoided. And congrats, guys. You outdid EA. And they shipped Anthem. <laughs> Anthem is yep. just a bad game. Like, Blizzard and Google both elevated beyond the level of being a shitty game company. Right, yes. Both um, of them did things you could consider evil. In some way. Right. In in a more grandiose manner than, say, shipping a game that you know is bad and forcing people to make it shippable within a constrained amount of time, even though they have no idea what they're fucking making and they have no means to make this thing they have no idea what they're making. It is a lot more evil than that in a very palpable manner. But we're here. We're here at the last category before game of the year officially starts <laughs> <laughs> this was this was all the pre-show this was all the pre-show eight hours of it <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the pre-show best soundtrack oh. of 2019 the candidates are come on death stranding bloodstained ritual of the night death stranding <laughs> <laughs> I just said it because Casey <laughs> said it. It was really funny. Um, no, not Death Stranding. Kingdom Hearts 3. Indivisible. River City Girls. Devil May Cry 5. Astral Chain. Disco Elysium. And Toho Luna Nights. Thank you very much to our pod lord. <laughs> you realize you're turning into that. That's good. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's just my I'm reading a list voice. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I'll let KZ go first. Okay, uh, number one, I wanted to point out the Astral Chain one because it, start, it started turning on neurons in my brain. Wait, how, many, how many things will you get to vote for? Uh, three because it's eight. Okay, yes. So, so I wanted to mention Astral Chain without voting for it real quick because um, at first I was like, Hmm, what was the stuff in that? And I realized I only remember two songs. <laughs> this is the one when you're in the base and the one that's in that trailer that's used for one of the major fights. I was like, damn. Damn, that one bass song's real good. Can it be carried that hard? Uh, no, nah, I guess it can't. I'll talk about it when I get there. <laughs> probably can't. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. 
Uh, fantastic soundtrack, plenty of stuff from previous games, an insane amount of new arrangements for a lot of stuff that surpass... They, they basically made the best versions of so many songs, but the fact that this is the first of those games that has custom music for every cutscene... The soundtrack is over 220 songs before the DLC is even out, and it's all really, really fantastic. Some of the best stuff from them, so that's probably my number one. Uh, next up, DMC5. Devil Trigger and Silver Bullet are really, really strong. And uh, trying to think of some of the other, the other fights, like uh, Cavalier Angelo. Also sticks out as like a really, really good song. I also like um, V's theme as well when you're doing his gameplay. Like that one quite a bit. So that's my other one. Uh, last one, Bloodstained. Just, that's a really, really strong soundtrack. Yeah, it is. Not, not, at, all, not at all shocked that it has stayed in my mind the entire year. Yeah, yeah, I think about it a lot. It's one of the things I look forward to when I go back to uh, replay the game. Uh, Especially that track uh, on the, the, the spinning tower. Yes. Oh, that song's so good. Very upbeat, uh, very mm -hmm. rock, nice violins. So yeah. good. I, I, I like that and the, the one in the lava core level. Yes. That's just going really ham on guitars. Mm hmm. Those are my three. Okay, uh, I'll let Feel go next. Okay, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, the fact that one of the best songs in that game is something you might hear for 15 seconds before you get jumped by the final boss is uh, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I'm glad that we get to explore that area in Remind so people will get to actually hear that song if they didn't go seek it out. God, yeah. That's actually one of the hotter moments in the Remind trailer to me. That it's just like yeah, you're uh, actually cause, exploring. Cause otherwise, if you skip the if you skip the cutscene where you first arrive in that area, you'll only hear that song for 15 seconds. Yeah, you'll get the loop if you're watching the scene, but but you know it's unfortunate. River City Girls. I think most way forward games have incredible soundtracks. This isn't an exception. Uh, I think like most of the songs even have some element of lyrics to them. I heard the really theme good. song for that, and that the theme song's real strong. The third one, this is hard. I'm gonna go with Disco Elysium because it's so different from the other seven, where it doesn't have like bangers, but the music is very mellow and it's very atmospheric. Like you're walking around like a crumbling, you're basically a crumbling European ghetto. And like the atmospheric music and how it sets the tone so perfectly is really incredible. And I found myself still thinking about a lot of the tracks way after I finished playing it. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. Um, Bob? Double May Cry 5. All right. That's the easy one. Okay. I'm doing River City Girls. That was... I, I really like that soundtrack. There's a ton of lyrics based songs. Oh yeah, that it I did hear a bit of it. It's it's really good. Mm -hmm. Now it's just <sighs> This is hard because it's between Bloodstained and Astral Chain for me. Mm -hmm. And the Astral Chain was something really new and different, and I felt like I I though not that mixed that well in the game itself, I still really enjoyed this music. Yeah. Uh you're like I, I I love Dark Hero so much. I've got to pick this soundtrack. Uh, don't say that, Casey. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'll go with Bloodstained. Okay, it's it's unassailable. <laughs> it it is really fantastic. I think I think basically everything on this list is yeah. Yeah, then I didn't even talk about Toho. Toho Luna Nights has a great soundtrack yeah, as well. Yeah, Toho Luna Nights has a lot. It's Toho, so I assumed it's all bangers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to vote. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is actually my third place, uh, but it's what I'm voting for first. Uh, Bloodstained 
has an absolutely incredible soundtrack. Uh, it is so fucking good. I haven't heard Michiru fire on all cylinders like that on a soundtrack in quite a long time. It really was something special, and I hope uh, Iga gets to make more games uh, with the Bloodstained IP in the future, and that he works with Michiru because, Jesus Christ, that was really something special. Um, Devil May Cry 5 I didn't really talk about. Not only those songs specifically, like the ones you think of when you think of Devil May Cry 5, really good, but just how the different battle themes sound and the different areas musics uh they're they're all really fucking excellent yeah uh, the way that the the grading system works with upgrading the and or like getting you more lyrics and more parts of the song is mm-hmm. really good it is so good it is really incredible um but my my tie for number one for me uh is astral chain um i listen to a lot of that soundtrack very frequently um, it actually has some really, really excellent uh, action sounding music for the set pieces where things are getting torn apart, you know, like Casey was talking about in earlier in Game of the Year where uh, it's just this amazing moment where you're chasing after the giant bio weapon as the city's getting messed up and redshift is occurring everywhere. It's got this incredible upbeat almost action movie sound to it but it also shifts between a more unique um techno sort of sound like uh you have a grindy almost dubstepy in a little bit of, uh, of the sound of the song it's really good it's really good and of course neuron hq is like the best song of this year probably um that's because devil trigger was shown off last year (laughs) ah yes so (laughs) i don't have to sit here and be like ah i first ran into that song this year um really great really great soundtrack i can't recommend getting a proper version of the astral chain soundtrack enough (sighs) so what we have is a tie for first and a tie for third let me uh second no, no wait, because yeah, one of no. the two that would be kicked out of first would be second. Right. Um, One moment. Let me set this up and then we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. Also, I would like to note uh, Indivisible, it doesn't really keep, it doesn't tread water with the ones I voted for. You know, it doesn't it, it doesn't com- the comfy PS1 RPG soundtrack. It sounds a it. lot like that, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't it, like it really Ride does the level of the others. It really does sound like, uh, if I recall the composer's name correctly, it does sound like Yasunori Mitsuda's other work, um, and it is really excellent. Oh, but the the, uh, the Chrono guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's quite. I don't think it's quite as good as um, these other songs. Um, these other soundtracks. Uh, sorry, it's Hiroki Ku- uh, Kikuta. Okay. From the uh, Mana, oh, okay. Mana series. I was like, I don't think it's the Chrono guy. I, I kept getting the names mixed up on those two composers, but yeah, no, it's the um, it's the it's the composer from a lot of Mana stuff. A lot of Mana stuff. Um, and I really do like that person's style in the sound of their music. Um, Secret of Mana was actually my first game and that I owned personally. Um, and I think Kakuda's music is really great, but just the production quality of the soundtrack isn't quite there. Um, it's that, the mixing, uh, just several things about it bring it down in my book, and that's why I didn't vote for it. It didn't make my top three in this list, but I still think it's really great. But uh, we gotta, we got to solve this problem. The ties are uh, first place slash second place is tied between Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, and Devil May Cry 5. And then third place slash runner-up is tied between Kingdom Hearts 3 and River City Girls. So we're going to solve these ties uh, separately, of course. Anything else would be insane. <laughs> um, I've got some ideas. <laughs> okay, Bob, I'm all here. Field, field, field <laughs> do you have an idea how to solve this? <laughs> Uh, yes, separately, the same way. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, well, so- double blind voting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, everyone voted for Toho Luna Knights by accident. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I guess this shit's awesome. Oh, I love man. Bad Apple. Oh god, I do <laughs> love Bad Apple. Um, okay guys. You get one vote each. You're voting between Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and Devil May Cry 5. Bob. Devil May Cry 5. KZ. Devil May Cry 5. Feel. Devil May Cry 5. Well, Bloodstained, I would have voted for you. And in fact, I did. But, uh, Dan, Dan sits, sits at the table at lunch alone. Sorry, sorry, Dan. Silver Bullet just pushed Devil May Cry 5 too high. Silver Silver Bullet's really incredible. I'm it that guy really that likes is. Silver Bullet more than Devil Trigger. I'm that guy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we have uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and River City Girls. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and vote first. I'm voting for Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Bob? River City Girls. Okay. KZ? Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, Feel? River City Girls, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, no, God it's fine. It's fine. Damn it. It's fine. <laughs> the important thing is being honest. Um, Now we got to talk about this. Uh... There's literally a battle in River City, River City Girls against a pop artist who has been singing various tracks throughout the game uh, and it has a guitar hero moment where you have to dodge that uh, it, or it, her guitar riffs along with the song. Bob, this is best soundtrack not games for Kino. Ah, that's true. Correct. <sighs> God. Kingdom Hearts 3 has a slightly updated remix of the Candy Goggles music. <laughs> yeah, that's why I voted for it. We're not getting anyone else with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to appeal to other people with that one. You're like, maybe if I appeal to Dan Harder, he'll just type in a three. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I just think about when, you, when you're when when you you're doing the fight against three Xehanorts at once, and then they mix in their th- all three of their theme songs, and it's probably one of the best songs they've ever done, to the point where the Ir- Yoko Shimomura said, when I listened to the arrangement he did, I got a nosebleed. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. It's so incredible. I don't think it actually used the Skrillex song in the game, did it? Uh, Yeah, if you leave the it on intro. the title screen long enough. Yeah, it's like the CG intro. Underutilized. <laughs> Bob, you have just fucking described <laughs> simple and clean, and I'm not going to take that shit. I know. I, uh, I, I mean, here's the thing, I right? simple and clean underutilized. <laughs> It, it I mean it isn't I'm saying I'm saying by saying the CGI intro is that then he would be saying the same thing about simple and clean oh uh, okay. yeah but does it only play on the uh the title screen loop or does it play when you start the game uh it's both okay actually, it's sim- actually it's just uh when you it's just when you start the game because they have two theme songs this time and they made an orchestral version of the ending theme which is the don't think twice one Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, the one that's not as good. So, so yeah, actually, face my fears. The Skrillex song is only used once, and simple and clean. To be fair, as a as a few has like eighteen hundred remixes because that was the popular one. But but it wasn't. They weren't all in Kingdom Hearts one. Yeah, there there were only three versions. There's the intro one. There's like the one at the end where it's a bit slower. And there's yeah. an orchestral one because they do an orchestral Utada track every every main game. Okay, so so f- face my fears is uh, tragically underutilized in this game, considering it is the most hype fucking music. Yeah, Bob, let me tell you something. What's up? Let me tell you something. You sitting? Okay. Good. Bob, Tosha's wake up alarm has been face my fears for a year straight, and I. St- Still don't get tired of it. That's fair. That song is incredible. It is so fucking good. I, I, you're going to make me get real here for a second. I don't listen to that song as much because it just it hits me really hard because it, I just go, yeah, that game came out. It's real. It really it's <laughs> a phase of my life ended. So I, I, I generally just have this insanely weird nostalgic emotional feeling with that song in particular in the same way. I do with the KH2 theme song. Yeah. I, uh, it's, 
it's really strong. That part where she's not even speaking English anymore is just that bubble, 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 bubble. Uh, that part constantly cracks me up. Uh, I'm going to say something that's undoubtedly going to upset someone's in the uh, Kingdom Hearts fandom. I think Face My Fears is the strongest a Kingdom Hearts 3 th a Kingdom Hearts theme has been since one. Um, just because the other songs weren't really going for that same sort of hit, you know? They were going for a yeah. pretty different sound. Yeah, it's the closest to club mix. Yeah, I don't even feel like that take that will upset that many people. Oh, Bob, Bob, you don't read our comments enough. Uh, you're Clearly. right. Every, gonna, every people day are gonna can, be, will upset them. It's true. So someone's going to get upset about that. But yeah, no, that's that's how I feel. I feel like when that song was announced, that was a great moment. I was like, wow, they did. They, they actually took advantage of Skrillex as a music producer to make some truly great music for this. I'm super jazzed. It might be it might be my favorite of those. Yeah, one, one thing I can say is Kingdom Hearts 3's production value, like the production value of the music in Kingdom Hearts 3 is w worlds beyond River City Girls. Uh, yeah, Just, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I mean, he did say it was 220 songs like it was a Pokemon game on crack. <laughs> Yeah, I was shocked because I was like, you know, Yo there's a lot of stuff that Yoko didn't do in the game in terms of like battle tracks. So that kind of disappointed me. Then I looked, there are like 90 songs devoted to cutscenes only. And I went, oh my God, it's like all her too. <laughs> it's nuts. This is the first time they really did that. They they usually, a lot of cutscenes in Kingdom Hearts are just silent. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. that sort of thing happens sometimes and it's, you can't even tell, like, say, Double McCry 3 soundtrack is kind of bloated and with bad songs that are just tiny versions of real songs from the game because they were <laughs> mm -hmm. like, here's the cussing version. It's like, I, the, I don't want that. That's just a literally worse version of something else in the game. Isn't, isn't that cool? No. <laughs> but, so, but yeah, this, this shit is immense to the point where it's like, it's not just, oh, we're you know, using like random tracks that existed before. It's it's new arrangements of old stuff, like old character themes, and it plays once. It's 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 ridiculous. Okay. Feel. Feel hasn't said anything in a while and I'm convinced he fell asleep. No, I'm awake. I just didn't have okay. anything to interject because my picking of River City Girls is entirely subjective on the on purely the grounds of I'd rather listen to that soundtrack than Kingdom Hearts 3 if I was like sitting yeah, here and, listening to one. And I'm choosing Kingdom Hearts 3 because it's an objective opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally. Give finally, back the point. <laughs> finally someone bringing those into this podcast. Well he said subjective it was the only place we could go. I mean there's not even the hint of like anything but my own personal bias here. Like I think Kingdom Hearts 3 is great and sweeping and magnificent and perfect for the in context mm -hmm. but I, I want to listen to river city girls more yeah no like there's a couple songs on there like probably five or six are almost are about as good as the uh, double dragon neon theme which i still get stuck in my head constantly oh you're talking about uh one two the second part of the first level of yes okay yeah that's an incredible song in Double Dragon Neon. Yeah, and they, I feel like they, they really dish that sort of sound out constantly, and I'm I eat that up. But I can I can submit Let me let me just I'm gonna listen to some River City girls. <laughs> okay. Be our type record, Dan. I I'm I'm maybe. Let me let me listen to some of this. Mm. Okay, I've heard this. Yeah. That sure is uh Vert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If it isn't, I'll be surprised. Oh, is it, oh, oh, did Vert do this? It sounds it. Yeah, I think I, I haven't looked it up in a while, but I think it's like half or half that other artist that did a lot of the vocal tracks. Oh, fuck. They had to do the echoey clap shit like it's <laughs> 80s music. <laughs> yes. Uh, <sighs> fuck. God damn it. I can't. I'm, I'm trying. I'm. I can't. There are really good songs in that. I'm listening to that. There are some really good songs. I'm trying to think of other really amazing songs. In my brain, my brain went. Might. Should I send him something? And I went. I can't choose one. 
so I'm not. I'm just gonna not. I, I'm trying to think of some of the other songs in Kingdom Hearts three that really push me over the edge, because you know, Face Your Fears, great, amazing. Yeah, I, I, I struggle thinking of other stuff that really did it for me during that game. But I, I, I I'm open to that that being in there. I just can't think of it offhand. But yeah, there's like, like most of the final boss music that they use for the various last fights send us some send, send us a uh, some quotes. Right, we'll see. play it let me let me pull up a couple here then there's uh all right there's that one hmm can you find yeah. me the final battle theme against uh xehanort oh the like the last last one let me mm-hmm is that shit was powerful in my opinion. Yeah, I was trying. To, I, I was thinking something a little hyper than that one we just heard. Yeah, because that one's that one's delivering back on musical cues from um, Birth by, uh, or actually no, it's a uh, two, right? Yeah, it's it's Kingdom Hearts two, and then it transitions to Shion's theme from Days. Mm-hmm. And that's Kino, but is it awesome music? I'm not sure. I really yeah, because because that it's straight up their battle themes. From their respective moments. Yeah. I, I I really do think the uh the final battle themes against Xehanort, I think you'll like that, Bob. Uh okay. There's there's the the last last one. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah, I, don't I feel know. like there's also the the Aqua fight one, which people seem to really be into as well. Has more of a Dark Souls esque choir in it too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not as into it as River City Girls. It's, it's rough. I'm like, I can tell yeah. that this is really well made music. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, but I it, think, I think we're just at an impasse, and I don't think anyone's gonna move. So we should right. just stalemate these. I'm lock, fine with that. Lock them both I into th third. Is everyone okay I, with that? I think, I think that's acceptable because in the end. Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't get snubbed by Death fucking Stranding. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck. L lower music is really good, but... Uh, yeah, since I don't think we actually said it, we didn't put Death Stranding on this list because it was primarily licensed music. I mean, even if it wasn't, even because people are out there saying only a third of the soundtrack or only two thirds of the soundtrack is licensed, uh, none of that... Like, looking at, looking at this top three for me... Like Devil May Cry Five, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and Kingdom Hearts Three, or even Astral Chain, which isn't technically in our top three, uh, uh, th those are way more to me as soundtracks than Death Stranding. Not saying Death Stranding soundtrack is bad. I'm just saying it does have a lot of licensed music, and it just yeah, doesn't I, hit. I unfortunately do not remember any song in it besides BB's theme. Which is a fantastic piece of music. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, that's and it is uh, it is so effectively used in that game and elevated like the last moments of that game for me. But every other piece of music I remember was really good songs Kojima paid money to get. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like those kicked in at really good times too. Like I think that they mm -hmm. they made good use of what they had. Yeah, I think it's the just, first yeah. time you hear low roar and you're coming down that incredibly steep uh, mountain as you finally make it to Port Knot City, I think that is a moment, and I think it's done well. But at the same time, if I were to, I it doesn't. Yeah, no. it doesn't hold its own, in my opinion, against these games. And see, that's the important thing, guys. The important thing isn't being first place; it's being four soundtracks better than Death Stranding. <laughs> yes. That and the fact that I wouldn't really chalk that up as a great soundtrack thing, and I'd put that more of a great direction. Uh, well, KZ, you're not thinking about it this way, okay? Here, let me help you. Mental exercise. We need to, you know, okay. convey the same the idea, convey the same idea, but just change some of the factors so you can really, you know, open up. Okay, ready? Close your eyes. Yep. You're walking through the narrow canyon, and you're about to see it. And just over the horizon, you see Port Knot City. And then you hear, Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. <laughs> I, I thought it was gonna be. So close your eyes, Dan. You're. Uh huh. You made it over the canyon. Uh huh. You're, you're, you're sliding down 
you're so excited to get this delivery done. You do the sprint, mm-hmm. you sprint in. You you make it in despite because you got a good you got a good exoskeleton. You don't have to worry about like shitting and farting and falling. this is this is completely inaccurate, but I'm still following it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you've you've turned it in. You get like like you, you get it. Die Hard Man uh, appears on screen and he goes, "You're the president, Jack shit." <laughs> Whoa. Powerful words. <laughs> well, that's it for all of our categories aside from Game of the Year. <laughs> this video was brought to you by the power of the legendary Gigaboots executive producer, Vincent Pover, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Danny Richardson, Dryzark, Red Blaze 27, and Texas Man joins Smash. Thank you for lending us your power, our executive producer. And also these guys. If you want to become powerful like our executive producers, then head on over to www.patreon.com slash gigaboots today. <laughs>